Three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe, the Synergy Collaborative and Synergy Lifestyle Academy. And I've got Lisa on the line, and her last name is Olona, right? Olona, you said it, yes. Olona. See? Olona. <laughs> but you're not Olona, you're with me. No, exactly. <laughs> dun, dun. So how are I you had today? A, an, I'm good. I actually had an English teacher in high school that used to cross out my first name and write, leave me. So I'd say, leave me, Olona. So that's been an ongoing joke with the last name. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm doing well. Yeah, it's been it's it's still morning time here, so it's been a good day so far. Cause you're in AZ, Arizona. I've never been there. No. I've been a lot of places, and it's weird because I just hired a business coach that is in uh, Tucson. I just got done talking with a guy from, I think Phoenix. Where are you? Uh, Phoenix area. You're, you're in Phoenix. He's he was in. I can't remember now. It wasn't Sedona, but. All this Arizona stuff coming. Does that give me a message? I'm supposed to come out to Arizona and visit? I think you should. Yes, for <laughs> sure. It's a pretty place to be. It's just a little bit hot this time of year. I understand. I took a drive down to California, went through Utah, and you get into all those places where all those red rocks are and stuff. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. But one of these days, I'll get out to Arizona. <laughs> so let's talk about you. You're a coach. I am. I started, I started out as a sports coach, so I coached volleyball. Uh -huh. um, that went into fitness training, and I was more, fitness, more of a fitness coach, and now I'm shifting it into more of a life coach and merging the two, fitness and life coaching together. Busy, busy. Are you married and got kids? No kids. I have three fur babies and oh. not married. Well, that'll yeah. occupy your time. Cats or dogs? Yes. All three dogs. In fact, I just got a new puppy. She's, I've had her for three weeks, so I got her at eight weeks old. So I'm, I'm sitting here hoping and praying she stays nice and mellow right now. Well, she can be a little unpredictable. And, well, they can be part of the party too. I'm good okay. with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what got you into the concept of uh, like, like uh, health coaching then? Why did you move away from volleyball and into um, no reason specifically. I just, you know, actually there was a time in my life, I kind of hit a rough patch in my life. And through that, I had put on some weight and I just decided that I wanted to lose the weight. I started training myself, um, creating my own nutrition program, my own fitness program. And then as I was doing that, I had other people asking for my help and I just enjoyed it. So to me, coaching is coaching, you know, so yeah. I've always been active. I've always loved uh, being physically active, physically challenged. And so I, I just, it kind of just kind of naturally transferred into fitness coaching. And I did some personal training at the beginning, but I love working with groups. I like the camaraderie and the energy you get with working, you know, with groups and stuff. So I started a, a boot camp, um, an outdoor fitness boot camp about 16 years ago. Oh, and wow. I've been doing that. Yeah. Um, and then I just noticed, you know, these, a lot of these ladies had goals. They, they had things they wanted to achieve, but in order to make that happen, we've got to get the head right. So I really started getting more of a passion for the mindset piece of it. Well, that's a huge piece of it. Um, like the mind, the concept, it's a big buzzword, you know, I got, I got a good mindset, but it's so kind of right. vague. What does that mean to have a mindset? I know the, like the entrepreneurial mindset, it's kind of like you get up, get out of bed, get to work. Whereas some people hit the alarm a couple of times and take a little snooze. So you got to kind of get that disciplined mindset going. But there's other things oh, that, yeah. like the concept of the, it isn't about competition, it's about collaboration. No? Okay, person, yeah. All person thinks, because you can get defeated all of a sudden, you think like, okay, I want to be a coach. There's so many coaches out there. I'll never be able to get any clients. Everybody else is, and you have that defeated, you're already beat. <laughs> exactly. And that's, that's exactly what happens is we, whether it's in business, it's in fitness or in relationships, you know, we decide we want to pursue something and move towards something. And then all of a sudden we hit these obstacles and those obstacles can be outside things or most of the time it's in our, it's in our minds and it's, it's the doubting words we tell ourselves and, you know, cause our minds are, are designed to protect us from anything new right. or anything, any kind of change. So our minds will do that. 
And we've got to learn to, to shift that thinking into something that's going to keep moving us forward. Yeah, oftentimes they'll protect you from nothing. Right. Yes. Because it's something exactly. that you got in your head from childhood or some dang thing. And mm -hmm. I um, worked with a breathwork coach uh, quite a while back. And I came from a family of alcoholic parents. And they used to reward me when they would go out drinking and, and abandon me. They would reward me by bringing me back a nut goodie, you know, the candy bar. Mm -hmm. I went through this, this breathwork session. And when I came through, when I was done with it, I was just crazy craving chocolate. I couldn't figure out what it was. So I stopped on the way home. I had to stop at a store and I go back to the candy department and they had this big giant package. It was a six pack of nut goodies. And I bought it and I ate <laughs> four of them on the way home. Wow. That was obviously some stuff that was from childhood because I was going through abandonment issues and stuff. That's uh -huh. what we were working on. And that's what triggered that kind of stuff. So that's the kind of thing that can be in your subconscious that it takes a coach or someone outside of you to ask the right questions and draw that information to the surface so you can diffuse it. Exactly. Like how powerful is that insight for you to have that and to look back and go, wow, like your mind was programmed that way. And you didn't even, like you said, it's subconscious. You didn't even know it. Yep. You and weren't you, aware of it. You have situations where someone, you know, later down the road, years after that they, they leave and you have this weird childhood reaction to it that you have no idea why you're doing it. But I would never have known that if I wasn't working with a coach to kind of shine light on it and give me that aha moment. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, I'm an advocate yeah. of coaches. <laughs> yes, I am too. I, that was my big goal for 2020 was to have a coach. Even as a fitness coach, I have my own fitness coach just mm -hmm. because I like that accountability and I like somebody else giving me that structure. You know, I have a business coach, a life coach, um, because of, of those reasons. Well, so many times uh, a coach can ask you a question that, that uh, will trigger something and give you a real simple answer, one of those uh, uh, duh answers, because your brain somehow, it, like you said, it protects us and it, it won't give you the answer because it doesn't want you going that way because it's protecting you and your coach mm -hmm. can ask you a certain thing. I bet you that's really powerful too in your like groups when you go on a retreat and you get away from the normal uh, daily grind and go to some place like Tulum, Mexico or Costa Rica or Bali, Indonesia and get out of the norm. Is that where you're That's that absolutely where you it. Where do you do your retreats? Yes, and so we actually do them in Sedona, Arizona, oh, which is you're talking about the Red Mountains, so yeah, so um, eventually I'm, I'm looking to get to Kauai and a couple other places, but right now they've been in Sedona. Um, and that was exactly my intention was to get these women out of their atmosphere because I would train them for an hour, you know, three to four days a week. And then they're off back into their normal routine, taking care of everybody else and running around, you know, just taking care of life. And so the idea of the retreats was to kind of pull them from that, let them focus on just themselves and really walk through some of these steps together. And um, our last retreat is where the inspiration for my, my book title came up. So I just published a book, it's called Cross Your Creek. And that's exactly, we, we set out for a hike and we showed up to the site, we walked down this hill and we're trying to find a trail for this hike. And we're, everyone's you know excited to do this great hike in Sedona, it's beautiful, but there's a creek in the way that we didn't know was there. And we had to figure out our way across this creek, which once we got past all the mindset stuff, because, you know, there was complaining, there was everybody's stuff came up in that moment, which was right. for me as a coach, I was just like, this is so perfect. Like this is experiential <laughs> learning happening right here. Um, and they, a lot of the ladies weren't thrilled. They, you know, they were talking about just going back to the car and just going to a different hike. And I thought, no way, like this is what we're learning in, in our seminars at the retreat. So this is a perfect opportunity. Um, and we, it took us an hour to get past all the mindset stuff and start working our way across this creek. Uh, but we got across it. We found the trail. We had the, the amazing hike and the beautiful view and all of that stuff. But that inspired the title for that book and sure. just steps in overcoming those creeks that pop up in our lives. And that's something that uh, the, the feeling of the accomplishment after something so difficult, a gauntlet, 
that you can't get through and then you do mm -hmm. break through the barrier and it uh, those things affect not just that like just the maybe the fitness element of it but it's probably going to affect everything else in relationships and spirituality and finances and career and has that ripple effect in all those other different things absolutely yep so you really love what you're doing I do. And I, I love where I'm headed. I love, you know, the getting kind of shifting it more from fitness only into the whole into life coaching. Cause like what you're saying is there's that ripple effect. So well, I, what I have a friend that uh, he's a, a golf pro. So he would teach C level executives, you know, how to golf. And the first part of it, they didn't even touch the clubs, everything. They sat at a boardroom and he had a big screen and he would ask questions and it was going through more personal stuff. Because if a guy's golfing and he's like slicing or hooking his ball or whatever, there's a reason for it. And some of these situations were like this CEO is having an affair with his secretary and it's something he's got and should probably not be doing. So you solve that problem, all of a sudden the ball goes straight. Amazing. Because there was something yep. else that was creating, because everything's all connected, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely it is. It's fascinating, isn't it? It is. I love it. You, are you still learning things and having your aha moments yourself? Oh, big time. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, like I said, I'd gone through like a physical transformation of my own and I had so many aha moments in there. And that's what really started to push me more into getting into mindset stuff and you know, the difference between a growth mindset, like this is challenging, this is tough, but that's a good thing because it's going to make me grow. It's going to make me stronger, wiser um, versus like a fixed mindset where this is challenging. Forget it. I'm not made for this. I'm done. You know, those two different mindsets. So. And you learn yeah. so much about yourself from the other people. And then I think it's, you got an advantage too with the uh, group coaching. Other people learn from each other. Yes. They have that. Oh my yeah. God, that applies to me too. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually shifting from, um, from the boot camp. I'm going more to just online fitness training, but we even focus a lot on groups online. So we have like a Facebook group page, we do zoom calls and that's a lot of what happens is they, they feed off of each other. And, um, you know, people ask questions that somebody else may have not even thought of, or just that energy and that encouragement and things like that can, can definitely help. That's what's so cool about this internet thing is that like my background's in the event industry and I produce a trade show every year and it happened in March. I just made it under the wire with the Corona thing. So March 4th is when the thing happened. Oh, wow. Yeah. But I was going to focus on hospitality, travel, tourism, and events. And then all of a sudden this happened and that kind of put the brakes on all that. So that's where I got innovative and I said, I'm going back into online stuff so i'm doing mm -hmm. these interviews and i'm doing affiliate marketing and that's just i kind of sh just pivoted my whole pivoted, income yep. system yep. and without that um the uh the entrepreneurial spirit you'd roll over and say i quit you know i'm right gonna, i'm gonna go get a job what am i gonna do oh my god and instead you got to kind of keep on going and persevere and cross the creek exactly you got to, if you, if you have that passion and you really tap into that and you really like let that passion lead you, then you, you will pivot. You won't let something stop you. You'll figure out, you'll find the right rocks to step on to get across the creek. Yeah. Know? The passion will pull you past the problem. That's kind of fun like to that. say, isn't it? Yeah. I just made that up. Passion to pull you past. The I wondered if you just made that up or <laughs> that was pretty good. Sounds good. <laughs> I'm going to keep it. <laughs> I'm going to go write it down myself. Do it. Yeah. You, gotta, <laughs> you know, some people, they get into that the whole, um, like protecting all their, their, uh, what do you call it? Um, intellectual property and all that kind of stuff. And uh, that's scarcity consciousness. That's thinking really myopic and small when there's such a big world for all this stuff. It's not like there's any lack. Right. Of, of stuff. And uh, like you said, like, like you might think, well, I'm not going to tell anybody about my market and stuff because I want to get these clients. What am I, I don't want you to take my clients. Well, right. if you don't treat your clients good and you have that, that thinking of that fear thing, they're going to feel that and they're going to leave you. Yep. So why not be happy, embrace it. Have an Attraction. abundance mindset. Well, there's plenty of it. 
Yes, she is just absolutely. Not explain, expanding and expanding. I, what came to my mind just right now is the concept of like an apple seed. You plant the apple seed and it grows a tree, which grows an orchard. And each orchard has apples in it. And each apple's got multiple seeds in it. It's like, there's no shortage. <laughs> just expand. What a great analogy. Yeah, I love that. That's Crazy. good. You think yeah. one apple seed could create an orchard that could have literally thousands of more seeds in it. Mm -hmm. I'm going. So yep. there's plenty of that out there. That's why I like doing these things with the internet like this, because it's, it's not a printed, uh, like a postcard or something that you can only print like a thousand cards and that's your it. Once you post this video, it's all over the place. Cause that's what I do with these. I put them up on YouTube and then I put them on blogs and put the propagate the blogs out and then you share it on Twitter and Instagram and this, and there's links all over the place. And then people type stuff into the Google thing, how to hire a fitness coach. And then it's tied in with Arizona somehow and they find it. Yeah. It's just the way that it works these days. Uh -huh. Some people yep. try so hard with this marketing thing, trying to do a direct sale and convince somebody I'm a coach. You should use me because I'm I, cause I need the money. <laughs> <laughs> but if you just let the client just find you, then they think it's their idea. <laughs> And it works yeah. much better. <laughs> so I don't like to do these too long because people do have that commodity of time. You know, there's only 24 hours right? in a day and they've got things to do. It's limited. Time is limited, isn't it? It starts yes. over every day. It's a whole new day. <laughs> <laughs> so how do we get a hold of you if we want to learn more about, and do you, do you like, you said you got a book, you got like a, a dip your toe in the water type of program, like a, evaluation coaching session or anything like that that you offer people? Um, so I have a couple things. I have a, a Facebook community page um, that they could, they could join. It's, it's cross your Creek community. And I do some coaching on there. Um, just getting that really started up as far as coaching goes. So I do some coaching on there. And, uh, I have a website, lisaolona.com. And you can just find me just Lisa Olona on Facebook or, I'm at Lisa Alona on Instagram. And the book, Cross Your Creek, is on Amazon. Well, wonderful. I will be grabbing some of that and I'll put it in the links and things that I propagate this out on the blogs and stuff. And Great. Well, this has been so fun to connect with you spontaneously. You as well. Yes. And I will get this out to you soon. I'll do, I, I do it fast, I get it out in about an hour. Oh, wow. You do. Okay. <laughs> Waste no well, time. Well, thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate it. And it's, it's been fun. Yeah. And if you got at another, well, like any retreat when this Corona thing opens up and you want to do something else and launch it and announce it and stuff, we can do something like that too. I would absolutely love that. Yes. I'm Wonderful. shooting for April of 2021. So I'm hoping we have enough time. Well, I've got this a, coronavirus behind us. I got a project I'm working on in Costa Rica where we're building a retreat center in the jungle. And that's oh, wow. slow, it's a, it's that idea where you'd get people out of their environment. It's not your typical in the beach kind of thing. It's mm -hmm. inside the jungle. So you heck with the cell phones. We'll, we'll have Wi-Fi access and stuff, but. I might be in touch with you for that. Yeah. It's in the, it's in the southern, awesome. southern region of uh, Costa Rica. Very cool. Okie dokie, Smokey. All right. You. Peace. Well, thank you. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>